In Excel, there is no function that specifically gives you a distinct count within a specific range or column. However, we can use two functions together to get that pretty quickly. So in my scenario here, I've got a table and it's got a column named project. And that project column has 24 uh, values here, but there, there's only four unique values. So in my total row down at the bottom of the table, what I'd like to see there is four, right? Not 24. Now, uh, since I did format this as a table, and you can see I've checked the box for my total row, I do have this built-in total row with a nice drop-down where I can simply pick the type of uh, total that I want for the project column. However, count gives me 24. That's a, that's a row count, right? As opposed to my distinct count. So I'm gonna take that back out, just using my delete key there. And then I wanna tell you about the, the two functions we have to use for this. The first one uh, that we're gonna put on the inside of our formula is called unique. And unique allows you to get the unique values from a range or a table column. For example, I'll just go ahead and select my, my whole project column here, close it out, and notice what it returns is actually all of the unique values in that range. But that's not what I want in my total row, right? In my total row, I just wanna see the count of what it shows me here as the unique values. So the second function we're gonna use then is count A. So I'm gonna use count A, which we can see here counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. And I'm gonna have that count the output from that unique value, okay? Which we can see there is gonna give me four. So instead of doing those separately like that, let's put them together for our total row. So down here, I'm going to type in equals count A. Okay, so I'm gonna count A, open up those parentheses, and then I'm gonna type in my next function, which is unique. Okay, so I want the count of unique items within this range or table column, right? And I close that out, make sure I have all my parentheses there, and I get that correct answer of four. Okay, so that's great, that worked. Now there's just a couple more things you need to know about this. Uh, I'm currently formatted within a table. So when I click within my table, I can confirm that it is indeed a table because I get the table design menu up here. So I can click on that and I can see my table name is one. Okay, so I just keep that in mind. And then uh, if I just wanna do maybe a range of cells as opposed to a whole table column, let's take a look at that. Uh, in, that, in that same spot, instead of saying count A unique and then project, as you can see it put in there for me, I could just select maybe these cells, right? And then I've got E8 through uh, E16. I'll close that out. I can see there's two unique values within that cell range. Okay, so I did it with a cell range. You saw me do it with a column, just like this, putting the column name in brackets, but that's within the same table. That's very important to know. If your formula, like in my case, is in a total row that's part of the main table, you just need the column name, just like that, and that's good enough. But if you're out here to the side, or maybe on a different worksheet even, uh, you have to do it just a little bit differently, and it's important to know the name of the table you're referencing, not just the column name. So if you're kinda new to table names, all you have to do to figure out the name of your table is click within the table itself, go up to your table design menu, and then uh, you'll notice your table name over here on the left. Now, if you're not seeing table design within your when you click on your table, it's because you haven't formatted it as a table yet. So you'll want to uh, click within your data range or your you know the the range of values that you already have, and you can use Control T to convert that to a table, um, or you can go to Insert and choose a Table uh, right here, which you can see is grayed out because I already have a table. So anyway, on my table design menu, I see that the name of this table is Table One. So off to the side here, I'm gonna say equals, and then I'm gonna do the same count A, unique, and then this time I have to actually reference the table. Now, you could just select the, the cells, of, let's say you're on the same sheet like I am, you could just go just like this, and notice it puts it in the correct format for me, table one and project, because I selected the whole column from this table, table one, project. I close that out, I get the right value. Right, so just a little bit different how we, how we write it based on where you're putting it. Now in a separate sheet, let's say I go to this completely different sheet over here, it's even more important to know the name of that table because I could just go count A, unique, and then uh, with my array, I'm gonna say table one. Okay, and then I open up my uh, brackets, put my column name, close it out, and I didn't have to switch over to that first sheet. But of course, some of you are probably thinking, you know, why didn't you just go back to the sheet and click on it? Uh, you certainly could. So you could say count A, unique, open up those parentheses, and then switch back to that first tab or that first worksheet, select that whole column again, and then close it out. And then it'll take you back to that, that sheet where you created it. So you could do that, but to me, that's a little bit too clicky. 
when I, when I could just know the name of the table and type it all out just like that. So no matter which way you use it, um, obviously it doesn't take too long at all. I've done it many different ways within this short video. Um, I hope it helped you. Let me know if I can help with anything else.